Okay, so let's start uh, another talk. Um, I'm I'm Adam, and I work for um, at MySQL, and um, together we are developing uh, Boost's geometry, um, a library for geometrical computing uh, used by MySQL to to do GIS stuff. Um, so we are part of Boost's ecosystem, so we adapt their principles, like uh, header-only, we're header-only library. Uh, we tend to uh, um, uh, focus on performance. Um, we use modern C++. Uh, um, we tend to do things in compile time, instant of runtime, and so on. And boost geometry uh, allows you to use you know, vector data and perform algorithms on this vector data. It also contains spatial index um, to speed things up and, uh, and now projections. <laughs> yeah, I, st I started. <laughs> it was a public demand. <laughs> um, so current version is uh, 171, uh, documentation, mailing list, and GitHub displayed. Um, we have, uh, our, let's say, vibrant dev development team. Uh, any contributions are welcome. Uh, we are participating in Google, Google Summer of Code, so uh, if you want to contribute, then please. Um, here are some algorithms, examples of algorithms uh, um, implemented in Boost Geometry. If you know OGC standard, then you know the algorithms. Uh, and here is Hello World, calculating the distance uh, between my home city and Bucharest. Um, and this distance in, is calculated in geographic coordinate system in WGS84 uh, by default. So um, we, we like to be as expressive as possible. So first uh, here, or maybe I'll use the, the cursor. So here we are creating a point which is 2D in geographic coordinate system, and coordinates are in degrees. And the data type is double, because you can, in post geometry, you can uh, use whatever coordinate type you like. And then two points like, are created, and function is called. Uh, and I'll be comparing with Proch4, which is state of the or approach, let's say, which is state of the art. Uh, I used 5.2 uh, for the comparison and benchmarks, and the current version is 6.1.1, which, which changes things severely. Yeah. So, uh, what are the differences? Um, work on projections in both geometry was started by uh, Barrent Girls. Uh, which is the original author. Mm, the code is uh, based on Proch4, so it basically works more or less like Proch4, but it was severely uh, redesigned in order to make it more, let's say, C++ friendly. Uh, and I'm not talking about the interfaces, but the internals. Um, so, the cons are that there are less transformation than in the uh, more more recent approach. Uh, it's the only there is no pipelines. Uh, there are of course no approach six features. Um, on the other hand, it's more let's say C plus plus friendly or boost friendly. That it's uh, header only. There are no additional requirements. There are no uh, environments variables. Um, used under the hood, um, it's, uh, it's faster, I'll show it later, 
um, and the expert, um, um, our handling is done differently. Uh, it's based on exceptions, so we don't store this global um, error code, which makes the library uh, well, thread safe, let's say. Um, during the talk, I'll be using this data. Uh, so here's the here are the vectors I, I'm using. Mm, there will be three examples: uh, one with Poland and Romania, and one with New Jersey. Uh, New Jersey I'm using because it's one of the um, last non-deprecated EPSG codes using uh, NAD grids. Mm, so here is Poland and Romania in uh, EPSG 4326, which is the native data of this file I shown. And I will be transforming into uh, conformant uh, project using conformant projection uh, to uh, EPSG 30. Three, four. So first, uh, this is how we would do it in Proch four. This is uh, this is Proch four interface. So two Proch four strings uh, and PJ transform to transform a list of coordinates. And the coordinates are interleaved x y in in the vector. Uh, this is, as far as I understand, you do it in Proj5, um, uh, where you'd pass PJ coordinates, uh, which are up to two to four di dimensional coordinates. And boost geometry, the, the, the most basic interface in boost geometry is not very different. Oh, first, um, um, note about the expressiveness. In boost geometry, it's possible to express various ODC um, primitives in the code, like points, line string, and multi-line strings. Um, so here we have geographic ones and Cartesian ones. So the, the point type uh, defines the, the coordinate systems at, at compile time. So here is the difference, right? Geographic in degrees and Cartesian. Uh, and all of the derived types uh, share in the, this coordinate system. So here is how we would perform the transformation in uh, boost geometry, um, which is more or less like Proch4. Um, first you have, you, you define your geographic multi-line string, create transformation object, passing uh, source and destination transformation uh, parameters and you're performing forward transformation and that's it but what but since we are in c++ environment uh, maybe you don't want to uh, create strings because you probably have parameters already in your code Oh, but this will be another example. <laughs> so in this example, I'm using different projection. That one was conformant. That this will be equal area. Um, so here it looks similar, right? Two proch four strings. And another possibility is to pass uh, parameters directly from C++. Which is similar, and the interface was um, based on boost program options. Um, names of parameters are the same, um, so it, it's similar to Proch4, but uh, it allows you to omit string parsing and string formation and string parsing on the side of library, which is faster. Uh, and if you know the um, what transformation you'll be using at compile time. So for instance, you're writing a very specific application doing very specific thing um, and only that 
and you want to be as fast as possible, then you'd probably want to do it at compile time. And it's also possible, uh, also with transformation object. So basically, here you're creating two types, and uh, and only filling the runtime values that are needed. Uh, but if you don't care about that, you can simply pass EPSG codes. And that will create transformation for you. The upper one is uh, that the EPSG code is passed in the runtime, and the below one is uh, passed at compile time. Now, the third example. Um, as I said here, I, I wanted to show you how to use NAD grids. It's different than. Uh, than in Proch, which uh, loads grids automatically uh, under the hood from a directory specified in, in environmental variable. variable. Um, in boost geometry, if you do something like this, the grids won't be used at all, so even if, if they are defined in the parameters. So, uh, this will this call will be the fastest. The transformation will be the fastest. The, the grids won't be. It, it, they even won't be parsed. I think. Yes. If you want to pass grids, you want you have to do it your, by yourself. And uh, mm, we want to be as want to give the programmer the flexibility. Um, to store the grids, whatever he likes, whenever he likes, uh, load them however he likes. So, uh, so we provide this additional class, which is grid storage, which takes uh, stream policy and grids definition. Um, so, I, if a stream policy defines how to load the grids, because maybe you don't want to load them from disk. Maybe you want to load them from somewhere else. Maybe you want to um, define the path somehow. So this allows you to do it. And the second parameter tells the library uh, how to synchronize the grids in case uh, you wanted to do a transformation in multiple threads. So there is the same. And uh, with this object, you, you also have the control where the grids are actually stored, how they are stored in memory, and uh, where they are uh, um, removed from memory, so where, where they, uh, they are destroyed. So in, that, in order to use grids, you have to put this grid storage somewhere, and then initialize grids for your specific projection, and pass the grids manually. So this example show how to uh, perform projection in one thread. If you want to use several threads, the only difference is that you're passing shared grids. And, uh, and shared grids uh, are using boost thread for synchronization. So here is an example how to perform the transformation in two threads and wait wait for it to, wait for bo both threads to, to end. But if you don't want to rely on boost threads, you, you don't want to have this dependency and, and have a compiler uh, supporting C++ well, 14, then you can use uh, standard threads and standard synchronization. So you have to um, include a different header, pass pass a different type, and you are free to go. The code looks exactly the same. And uh, here are some benchmarks. Um, um, 
I'm showing the uh, time of construction of projection and below is the transformation itself. Um, so this benchmark is for the first example. As you can see, uh, the construction is mm, a lot faster with uh, well, when you don't have to parse strings. Uh, and because it's possible to, because it's hadron only library and because it was severely redesigned, it allows the compiler to, uh, to perform transformation faster than Proch4 because the compiler is able to optimize and, and this makes things a lot faster. Um, it's the same story with another projection. Uh, yes, I'm not entirely sure what happens here. <laughs> I also tried Proch6, uh, but the, the comparison would be unreliable because it does things entirely differently, uh, searches mm, the definition in a, in a database, so it takes a lot, lot longer to create. Um, and the time of execution is uh, still slightly slower than Proj4, uh, so, so I just um, omitted Proj6 here. Um, yes, and it's, uh, well, it's basically the same for all cases. Uh, with NAD grids, uh, I think the difference is even more. It's uh, more or less two, two times faster. Um, and how it behaves in uh, multiple threads, so some charts. Mm, these are times of uh, of the same work divided into multiple threads, how they are scaling with threads, with number of threads. Right, so Proch4 is black and boost geometry using boost synchronization or STD standard synchronization is, is red. So there is no difference actually be between boost geometry, be between uh, boost thread and STD. And different machine and different compiler. Now with Proch5. Also Clang. So, uh, so yes, uh, that would be it. And we also have this extension, which you can use with Visual Studio to um, to visualize your variables at at debug time when you're debugging in Visual Studio. Okay, thank you. Um, yes, if there are any questions. Uh, what kind of threads uh, are you using for uh, Proch4 and Proch5 uh, benchmarks? Standard ones. So it's it's C plus plus eleven STD thread. Sorry, is the code available on GitHub? Yes, <laughs> yes, of course. bottom line. So yeah, you can test it. Um, do you have any interest from any of the C projects to use this library? Or have you tried to get other people using it? Let's say, especially map server, but the other programs relying on C and C++? 
Um, no, we, we didn't try to reach uh, anyone. Um, um, I don't know well enough about map server to to suggest if it would be a good fit or not. But my understanding is that uh, uh, map server lives in a specific ecosystem which already have um, already which already have everything it needs. Maybe because. Um, um, from other libraries' point of view, like uh, Proj4, for instance, the functionality here is duplicated. So um, I guess it depends um, on what aspects of development you would to like to put focus on. Um, if you tend to perform, if, if you tend to um, care about performance more, or maybe about modern C++, or about features, or accuracy, right? Then you would pick one or the other. Any more questions? Are you really, really hungry? OK, so i just like to thank Adam and wish you a pleasant lunchtime. So see you in the afternoon. Thank you all for coming. <laughs>